James Madison's Federalist Papers Numbers 10 and 51 are two influential essays that form part of the larger body of work known as the Federalist Papers, which were written in 1787 and 1788 to promote the ratification of the United States Constitution. These essays are often regarded as essential documents in understanding the principles of American federalism, republicanism, and the challenges of balancing individual liberty with the need for a stable government. In Federalist No. 10, Madison delves into the concept of factions, which he defines as groups of citizens with shared interests and passions that are adverse to the rights of other citizens or the best interests of the whole community. Madison is concerned about the negative impact of factions on the stability of the government and the protection of individual rights. He acknowledges that factions are an inherent part of human nature and society but argues that the larger the republic, the less likely it is that a single faction will gain enough power to oppress the minority or infringe upon individual liberties. Madison's solution to this problem is a representative democracy that can control the adverse effects of factions. Madison's thoughts in Federalist No. 10 can be seen as a precursor to the modern concept of pluralism, where multiple competing interests prevent any single faction from dominating. The Constitution structure, with its separation of powers and checks and balances, is designed to mediate the influence of factions and protect minority rights. Madison's emphasis on a large, diverse republic as the best safeguard against the tyranny of the majority reflects his conviction that such a system is less likely to be dominated by a single faction's interests. In Federalist No. 51, Madison continues the theme of checks and balances, focusing on the relationship between the various branches of government. He argues that the structure of the government should mirror the division of powers within society. Madison famously declares, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. This encapsulates the essence of Madison's argument, the need for a system that acknowledges the imperfections of human nature and prevents any one branch of government from becoming too powerful. Madison also introduces the idea of the separation of powers, advocating for the independence of the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. He emphasizes the importance of each branch having the means to defend its authority and act as a check on the others. The framers of the Constitution intended for these divisions to create a system where ambition could counteract ambition, promoting balance and preventing any one branch from usurping too much power. Furthermore, Madison delves into the role of the people in upholding the Constitution. He argues that a strong, virtuous citizenry is essential for the success of the government. Citizens, he contends, should have the knowledge and ability to choose capable representatives who will safeguard their rights. He emphasizes the importance of a government accountable to the people, suggesting that a dependence on the people is, no doubt, the primary control on the government. Overall, Madison's Federalist Papers Numbers 10 and 51 offer a profound analysis of the principles of American government. Federalist No. 10 deals with the problem of factions and the necessity of a large republic to mitigate their harmful effects. Federalist No. 51 delves into the separation of powers and checks and balances, advocating for a government structure that reflects the divisions within society while emphasizing the importance of a vigilant and virtuous citizenry. These essays continue to be essential in understanding the core ideas that underpin the United States system of government and the enduring relevance of Madison's insights in the modern political landscape. Madison's belief in the careful balance between the need for government and the protection of individual rights remains a fundamental consideration in the ongoing debate about the role of government in society.